Centrifugal clutch in slow motion. I can do that. That's an awesome viewer request, and I just so happen to have two engines lying around that have centrifugal clutches. One is this two-cycle Roven engine, which is for a fifth-scale RC car that I don't have, and this is a two-cycle engine. The second one is the turbo diesel go-kart. So this is gonna be a good comparison between two different types of engines. The first type of clutch I'm gonna show in action is gonna be the most common type of centrifugal clutch that I know of. It's the same clutch that the turbo diesel go-kart uses. I'm gonna open this up and show you what's inside so you can get an idea how it works. This is the bell housing, the sprocket. I took this bell housing off and this retainer plate. This retainer plate holds this spring which holds all of these shoes toward the center of this clutch. If we take the spring off, you can see these shoes just fall right out. But this spring, I, don't, I can't even open this spring. I mean, this has gotta be like 100 pounds. The amount of force that these shoes are pushing outward overcomes the pull of this spring. So that gives you an idea how much force is created and that's how these shoes come in contact with the bell housing and transfer the power from the shaft of the engine to the sprocket, to the chain, to the axle, to the road. Now that you know the idea behind how a centrifugal clutch works, the only thing I have to do now is set it up to make it visual so we can see what's going on inside of that clutch when it's working. I'm all done cutting my pieces and I just want to show you what I have here. I can't help but think this looks a lot like something from Mad Max, but this is what happens when you either don't have enough time or don't have the right equipment or both. This is how things look. Functional, but not necessarily beautiful. Okay, clutch is all done. Looks fantastic. Let's see if it actually works. I got the clutch all set up on the Kohler diesel engine. And one thing about this type of diesel engine, you can hold it full throttle for practically eternity. This engine doesn't care if something happened, if the clutch broke, if the clutch is overheating. It's a torque monster and it loves load. So it's probably just gonna keep on going no matter what. Let's start it up, go full throttle and see what happens. Let me start this up and show you what diesel power is all about. I'm just gonna floor it, hold it there, hold the brake, and let the clutch destroy itself while rolling the high-speed camera.
If that didn't give you a good idea for how a centrifugal clutch works, I don't know what will because that right there was power converted into friction. That's for sure. Told you diesel was no joke. Tearing up clutches, breaking gearboxes, torque does not play. That went really well. The only thing I didn't like is that we couldn't really see the spring at work, even though the whole clutch exploded and that was really cool. I don't think we could really see what the pads were doing. Now we're gonna move into something that doesn't have that much torque, but has a lot of RPM. And this time the clutch is nice and open and we're able to see the spring and what it's doing with the shoes. This clutch works off of the same principle as that previous clutch, but it's on a two cycle engine, only has two shoes and one spring and operates at a much higher RPM. The way I set this up is really simple. I built this ring which represents the bell housing of a typical clutch. And the bell housing of the clutch is normally connected to the drivetrain. Now it's time to see visually how it looks when it works. It's actually quite difficult to crank. That tells me that uh, this thing's gonna sound pretty wicked once it's running. I'm told by the people at Engine DIY that this engine is basically the 2JZ of uh, 29cc engines. This thing's supposed to put out like a whole bunch of power. 2JZ, baby. And I don't know what these tanks are. These are some sort of like, they call them supercharger. So I don't really know. I didn't have time to research it. But if you know what these two tanks are for, let me know in the comments below because I have no idea. Here we go. I'm gonna run the engine on gasoline, go full throttle all the way and hope something crazy happens. Oh, hit me in the face. Damn, that hurt. Slapped me in the face and hit me in the hand and got my finger. That really hurt. That was painful, I almost cried. Looks like uh, somewhere along the line, the spring came off. We can definitely see how the pads are contacting the bell housing now. If you didn't get a good idea with the high speed footage, well, there you go. Got a good idea now. can get that spring back in there but that was a really interesting run to say the least all of this brake dust on the table and that tells me that the type of pads or i should say the type of shoes that they use in here are some type of organic compound they're not the same as the regular centrifugal clutches which was really sad is that it got so hot and there was so much vibration it broke my beautiful welds but there was so much heat that was created from all of that friction that it not only melted everything here, but it also weakened the spring 
but it's still kind of hot, to the point where you can see the little hooks on the spring. They actually opened up and released from the shoes. And uh, yeah, that's what happened. And the most interesting takeaway from this is when the welds on the ring broke, it gave you a really good idea for just how much force is being exerted on those shoes because as the crankshaft was spinning, the ring was ovaling out with the rotation of the clutch. And that gives you a really good idea for just how much force that is. And that is the core mechanism of action and how these centrifugal clutches work in the first place. And the other thing I took away from this test is that this is definitely a tough little engine. So I'm gonna put a link in the description below to this engine, just in case you're interested. It seemed pretty powerful for its size, but one thing is I still cannot figure out what these two tanks do. If you know, let me know in the comments below. I don't know what these are. They're calling them some type of supercharger tanks. They don't look like a supercharger to me, but they must do something because they're here. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to share your ideas because obviously I'm listening. I make them happen. That's all I got for you today in this episode. See you next time. Adios. Row Fun Power 29cc.